fan. Mm. Another shooting today. Looks like a, a far right guy. I don't know if he's a far right guy, but he's a... Doesn't look to be a leftist, that's for sure. What's going on in our country, bruh? Oh, we have... That's cute. Did we have three. Out? We have a whopping three subs now, babe. We're rolling. Oh? We're rolling. <laughs> Well, there's been like five right wing killers this week, killings this week. That's true. There's uh, the Kroger one where he killed those two people. It was a hate crime. There was a, the uh, the synagogue shooting, obviously, and then now this one. I need somebody to get on and explain this. Yeah. Somebody's got to explain this because these dudes are straight violent. With la, you got a lot of angry people in the world right now. The Kroger guy apparently tried to get into a church first. What is going on? <laughs> uh, in the combo between UVM fan and Finn, he was saying that... <laughs> How the right wing is mostly not the violent ones. Well, yeah, at the time. They weren't beating people up at protests. And then... See, the thing is, when the leftists go oh, and get man. violent, they'll hit you and stuff. But these guys... They're all, they're trying to kill you. Well, shit, BM fan, your uh, your argument has been validated by one um, in one week. <laughs> no notification. Typical. typical. Well, you won't get a notification from this one, buddy. Because mm -mm. it's a new channel. This is a brand new channel, sir. So unless you're subscribed, you won't get a notification. Oh, Ian's one of our subscribers. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ian? Good to see you, bruv. I did read that email. Much love to you, buddy. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. So, uh, BM fan, are you going to call me up and talk to me about these uh, these individuals? We don't, I mean, some of this is kind of dangerous because we don't really know exactly what, what homeboy's motive is in killing. And the other part of it, it's like, it, it, are, is it like not not worth it enough for these major outlets to report on them because only two people were killed whereas oh last week gosh. you know 11 people got killed so it's like it's more of a you see what i'm saying yeah yeah like crazy world right now pretty sure this guy they found his social media yeah they found his social media for sure uh bm fan i don't know what your take is on uh gun control but i haven't heard <clears throat> I haven't heard any, um, my view on gun control, this kind of tour and my inner leftist wants workers armed See, to defend themselves. people are thinking that, oh, he got a new profile? I don't remember seeing the team. But at the same time, it's definitely conflicting. I just don't know if there's a, actually a workable solution, man, for, for gun deaths in America. Or maybe, maybe it's because there's 300 million of us where I, I, I think that, you know, we're getting killed at these alarming rates when in reality we might be in line with you know everybody else's death rate due to weapons who knows i don't know i don't know what the solution is here always follow your constitutional right first and foremost also for reference mark sart stated under no pretext should arms and ammunition be surrendered any attempt to disarm the workers must be frustrated by force if necessary welcome alec uh, it is Saturday night and another shooting, so here we are. All right, here we go. We got our first caller. Hey, you're on Middle America. Who am I talking to? Hey, man, it's Tesco. What's going on, Tesco? Hey. Oh, we've been saying it wrong all this time. Talk to me. Talk to you. Um, yeah, just let's talk about gun control. Okay, talk to me about gun control. Well, there's a couple things. One is we already have forms of gun control in place. Like for like if you're, I'm pretty sure like if you're a felon, you can't get a gun. Um, things like that. So when you say try some gun control, like like 
what do you like? You give me some examples of things you think we should try. Well, you know, just okay, like most other first world nations around the world, they've got sort of you have to apply to have a gun permit or a gun license, you know, and then you know the police can do background checks on you before you purchase a gun and do all the rest of that and I just think I mean if you look at statistically um, America has a much much higher rate of gun violence than anywhere else in the you know western world so you think that um, the a registry a gun registry would would have stopped the violence today or, or last week it would reduce it I think I mean I, I hear that like you know oh, it's going to be too hard and there's going to be too much kickback. But I think what I've been thinking is that maybe if you had sort of a... You put a law in place and you say, right, everyone that wants to own a gun, um, over the next five years, you know, you can get your paperwork sorted out and we'll just slowly phase this in over time. And then everyone that's... You know, 90% of the people that want to own guns are going to be compliant and they're just going to do it. And it's, you know, the 10% that, or, you know, I'm just making up numbers here, but however many that don't want to do this, that, you know, those are the ones that you don't want to have own guns anyway. Well, yeah, but you think that that's going to stop them from owning guns? I think it'll make them more difficult. So, like, um, if it's, if, if, it's illegal for them to own a gun, chances are the price of them owning a gun is also going to go up um, just because it's going to create sort of a underground market for it. So it's going to make it more difficult. And, you know, you, all you're going to be left with are the criminals that own the guns, but, you know, they, they're going to do it regardless. Yeah, I just feel like that would open up a lot of black market gun selling and that the, if you are the type of person who's inclined to go into a public place and just open fire, you're not gonna listen to any gun law that's that's around. But with with regards to like the background check, if you if you're known to have like the majority of these mass shootings are from people who are you know mentally unstable, and these are the people that shouldn't have the guns. I mean it's there's a difference between sort of a criminal mindset and sort of a mentally deranged mindset. And it seems to be the mentally deranged ones that are, you know, going into synagogues or going into churches and shooting up the place, right? Yeah, but hold on for a second. Th those laws are only going to be applicable to the law-abiding, right? If I'm not a law-abiding person, which I'm not by the fact that I'm willing to go and shoot a bunch of people in a public square... What does that law do for... I mean, I'll just go get it on the black market and shoot up a bunch of people. How does that stop me? It, it, makes, it, it makes it more difficult. How, does it, how would it make it difficult because for a person... Can't, you, can't just, you can't just walk into a store and buy a gun. I just said the black market. You can get it underground. Yeah, you, you can, but then you, you have to... You know, it, well, I mean, it, this, this, it works everywhere else, you know? Um, and I just think that by not trying... It's sort of saying, well, you know, we don't really value the lives of these people that are getting murdered, you know. Um, you know, it's just collateral damage and it's just not well, worth it. Well, look, I think that you're mischaracterizing the dilemma here. I, For example, me, if, if, you, if you told me tomorrow I could have a, a magic wand and, and we could have complete gun confiscation in America, I would be all for it. The problem is we got 300 million guns in this country. So when you say that that you know making background checks would be would more stringent would make it more difficult to have a gun, I don't see how that how how does that compute? If I'm on the black market and I want to sell guns, I want to traffic in guns, that's going to make my business boom, isn't it? Cuz now if if you're a psychopath or whatever, now you have to go to me instead of going to your local gun store. People that are not from the U.S. are asking, like, can you give some context as to what our gun control laws are so that way 
they know what's going on. Yeah. Hey, hey, can you stay on the line? Cause, cause it's, cause I want you to stay on the line. M death, M death fan. Um, M death fan is our, our is our local um, right winger. <laughs> so um, we're hello R W. Appreciate y'all. So we got some people from Argentina. That's great. Um, M death fan, if you could if you could jump online here and join the conversation, we'd love to we'd love to have you. Because he's he's gonna tell us about his constitutional right and all the all the good jazz. Okay, good. Um, all all I'll say is that you, you got a country that's got a three hundred million guns in it, bro. Yep. So what and what is then, and then lots of people are killing each other with those guns, so that I mean reducing the number of guns surely would also reduce the number of, I mean, it just makes mathematical sense, doesn't it? Well, my question is how would you do that? How how would you reduce three hundred million guns? So if you want to be a responsible gun owner, get the right paperwork. But I don't. And, you know, part, part of part of the other um, sort of requirements is that you need to have your gun in a locked safe um, and things like that. And the police come around and they do a, a check of your of your safe and your property and all that to make sure that you know. It's not going to be easily accessible to children or, you know, anything like that. For 300 million... We don't even have the force for that, my guy. How could you possibly have the police do that? You see the dilemma? I, I, I understand the dilemma, yeah. But I, I just think it's trying to do something is better than not trying to do anything. Well, again, America doesn't isn't not trying to do anything. The problem is, is that if you have a Jordan Peterson's interrupting me. Be quiet, Jordan Peterson. Um, don't talk so rude to him. It, I know it's a big homie. If you have a country that that has three hundred million guns in it, and you have a sizable population, which we do, we've got about three hundred twenty million people in our country. We almost have a gun for every citizen. It then becomes virtually impossible to be able to ferret out who in that population is going to be the one. Because this, this, these guys are less than 1% of 1%, right? Yeah. So how in the world are you going to be able to legislate laws? Like, for example, when you said if you want to be a responsible gun owner. Well, if I'm a psycho killer, I don't want to be a responsible gun owner. So all, you, it seems to me like you're speaking from the perspective of a law-abiding citizen. Plus, a lot of people that have guns well, have unregistered yeah. guns because they don't want them registered. They don't want the government <laughs> knowing that they have them. So we're even, in, law, we're in Maine. even law-abiding citizens That's that right. you know abide by all the other laws of the nation, um, I know lots of people that have unregistered guns. So it wouldn't even yeah. that would never even get checked up on. That's, I mean, it's not easy, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, like I said, if I could have a magic wand and get rid of all the guns in America, I would. I'll, I'll Look, all the Second Amendment people are going to kill me for that, but I would absolutely tomorrow do that. Well, I mean, see, like, uh, I know you, that there's a long history in America of why it is the way that it is, but I don't think that, you know, I don't think the legislation is keeping up with, you know, modern society. You, like, you can't have laws governing things from hundreds of years ago that, it, uh, you know, it, it doesn't quite fit where the current technology or social climate or anything like that. And I find that laws are quite slow to adapt, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. Um, I just think that, you know, where we are right now in America, I, I just have a hard time finding what the solution is. I'm definitely not one of these Second Amendment people. Um, the Constitution says I can have a gun, therefore I should have a gun, and nobody should, you know, infringe on my right to have a gun. I'm not there. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not anti-gun or anything like that. I mean, recently... I went shooting, you know, out of my friend's farm with, and he has a license and he, you know, he has all the guns and 
we just, just go out, shoot targets, and as long as we've got someone who owns the guns and who has a license, we're perfectly fine to do it. You know, no, it didn't seem like it was very difficult or had many restrictions or anything like that. So, I mean, anyone that's wanting to hunt will still be able to do that. You know, right. it's just sort of having people that shouldn't be, have access to guns have it restricted, I think, is... Well, what I'm saying is there, there are, there are already, we already have those restrictions in America. It's, it's not a free for all. There's lots of restrictions on gun. The problem is, is that there's a legend, there's a legal restriction, but there's no actual physical restriction. As in, if I know somebody that has a gun on the black market, there's literally no way to police that and right. stop that from happening. It's all the, the analogy is kind of like prohibition. You know, when they try to outlaw alcohol. And it was like, no, it's like, yeah, oh, it, you know, yeah, let's just, try and do with drugs and all that. yeah, it's like, how, you know, how can you, how can you do that? How can you make that work? You know, and that's, that's the thing where I'm kind of like, I don't really know. I, I, I haven't really heard any like solutions where I'm like, okay, we can action that in America and it would work. So you don't think like a slow kind of phase in into some kind of further restrictions would help that at all? No, because we've got a pretty, I mean, even in this chat. We're, at all? You don't think it would help at all? Look, here it is. Vin, if you don't support the Second Amendment, there is a legal way to do that. Support an amendment to the Constitution. Otherwise, you'd have to support the law or be lawless. Yeah, James, I agree. Um, I, I don't think it would help at all because we have stricter laws. You don't think it would help at all. Well, we've already, look, we had, we had more relaxed gun laws a hundred years ago and much less gun deaths. So we've increased, yeah, I mean, we've increased. You had muskets and, you know, not these, you know, semi-automatic rifles that are. Yeah, but. Just, you, you didn't see people walking in play into saloons and randomly shooting 30 people at a clip. That didn't happen. Everybody was carrying guns. You didn't just go in there and start shooting. Well, you would have got, got your ass kicked. Oh, we try not to swear on this channel? No, you're good. No, but see, no, you're right, though. That's the, the, see, that's the opposing argument, though, is that you have other, you know, back in the day, everybody was strapped. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't go in there. You wouldn't do such a thing. You wouldn't do that because you wouldn't get very far. Yeah, but at the same time, you, you can't really have a mass shooting with, you know, a, a musket. <laughs> you yeah, know my, what I mean? Like, it's mainly used for defense and for hunting. Yeah, but again, um, people weren't even attempting it. Are, are you saying that if people had uh, had AKs 100 years ago, they would have been doing that? Uh, possibly. What data do you have that demonstrates that? Yeah, but I mean, if you if you had like incidents where people were were walking in and, and trying to shoot people at random, I mean, people people weren't this phenomenon where people are just going in and randomly killing large swaths of people. This is relatively new. I mean, you, you know, in UK, I, I don't. Are you in the UK? No, I'm New Zealand. Okay, so in the UK, there's a rash of knife killings, right? People getting knifed all over the place. You know that. Yeah. Well, that, they weren't doing that a hundred years ago. Not to, not at this clip. So something is wrong, right? But it's, it's a lot harder to kill, you know, 50 people with a knife than it is 50 people with a semi-automatic rifle. I, I'm with you. I'm with you a trillion percent. What I'm saying is, is that it, it doesn't seem that the law is going to stop the issue when, you know, I mean, are, are, are you in favor of, of uh, knife control? I'm, I'm not being funny. No. no. But, uh, you know, but a bunch I of people just, in the UK are getting stabbed up right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, they also have a lot of um, sort of terrorism issues over there. And again, with the mentally sort of people with schizophrenia and all that, that have a sort of a tendency to go down that path, just like everywhere else in the world. But, you know, I, I think that if you look at all the countries that have you know more gun control than you would in the states you'll also see that per capita the number of 
gun deaths are much smaller. I mean, if you have a gun in your house, the chances of you using it to defend yourself is less than if you were to accidentally shoot yourself or shoot, you know, someone that you know. Yeah. Okay, so just to be clear, what laws do you think we could have had that would have stopped last week's events and, and today's events? Um, again, just having sort of, uh, when you, if you want to buy a gun, just apply for a permit and, you know, have a background check, make sure that, you know, you got all your marbles together and all that. And yeah. Those are already in place though. Those are laws that are already in place in America. Are they? Mm -hmm. uh, well, if, if that's the case, then I'm quite confused about... Because it seems to me like access to guns is much easier in America. Well, I mean, the, the issue... What, what the folks on the left usually say is that we need to um, completely ban quote-unquote assault rifles, like the AR-15, which is not an assault rifle. But who's being technical? But people are what the argument people are making is not that we should do background checks because they know that we do them. What they're saying is high-powered automatic and semi-auto weapons should be banned from from private use. So that's that's the argument. I, I mean, I don't know that I sort of agree with that angle, but I mean, uh, a lot of these. Do you think that a lot of these people that have gone into these places and shot them up have had a history of being, you know, mental illness or whatever it is? Well, of course, but a law that says mentally ill people won't have, can't have guns will just push them to the black market, like I said earlier. But, I mean, I think that would reduce the, the number of people that can go out and buy a gun with mental illness. I mean... Hold, hold on, brother. Hold, hold on. I need you to answer this question for me because we keep going in circles. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If I can't buy a gun at Walmart because I won't be able to hit the, the med check, right? Okay. What's stopping me from simply going to get the gun at the black market? Same gun. I mean... That's why there's a black market, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay. I'm just... I'm trying to sort of think of how to word this correctly I mean I guess part of it because I mean you have like like we've been discussing in the UK people with mental illness that do this you know stabbings and stuff but it just seems like the damage that they can do is less because I, I mean I'm sure that there's a black market for these weapons in other countries right but we're talking about America, where we have 300 million yeah, guns. I know, I know. There's, there's I mean, no analogy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm speaking this as, as an American who loves my country, but there's no analogy, right? I mean, you've got yeah. almost one firearm per citizen. God Almighty, yeah. you know. So, do you, do you feel, do you feel safe like walking around in America? Of course not. No, not at all. I've, I've been to America um, a couple times, and especially in. LA and like uh, some like New York was pretty good, but in LA felt pretty unsafe walking around, especially at night time. You know. No, um, I, I I don't feel safe in America, and I you know anytime I go to the movies with the kids or whatever, there are certain checks that I go through. Um, you know, some of that's due to my background, where you know, whatever. But well, you know, because if you come to somewhere like New Zealand, you're. I mean, you don't have that fear. That fear doesn't exist. Yeah, but uh, what I'm what I'm looking for, brother, is a solution for America. Your yeah, solution yeah. is to make it so that he can't go to Walmart and get a gun. I agree with you. The problem that I'm faced with, though, is what happens if he goes to the black market? Right. Your yeah. legislation does nothing for the black market question, does it?
into mass shootings. So the black market, you're still having going to have criminals going to it, sure, but I don't know that you're still going to have people with mental issues going to it, especially because a lot of people with mental illness might not have the funds to get more expensive weapons that are on the black market. Yeah. I, I, Does that make sense? No, not at all, because... <laughs> Because because um, anybody who commits any sort of killing of a of a of a random person is mentally unstable, but they're simultaneously a criminal. So the dichotomy. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I'm talking about like people in gangs and people that are out trying to, you know. Yeah, but those guys, those guys are, uh, those guys aren't committing the 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 majority of the shootings that we're talking about. When we're talking about active shooters, gangbangers yeah. don't actively shoot. As far as they don't go into a place and just randomly start picking people off. Yeah, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. The, so what I'm saying is people with mental illness are not, it, it's not like they're, they're highly intelligent. Yeah. They're usually higher on the intelligence scale and they're extremely resourceful. And a lot of them, there's a co-belligerency between mental illness and criminology. So I, I'm just I'm just not I'm just not seeing how look like I said if, if we could have a magic wand I'd go for it I'm not really for the right wing side on this um, I think we have a serious problem in our country I just don't see how I I feel like we've crossed an event horizon in America as far as guns go to where we cannot go the solution can't be any sort of law restricting access to guns because our country is literally infested with them. We probably have more guns in this country than dogs, right? You see what I'm saying? So it's like... Yeah, I just think that, like, like I said, I just think that trying something is better than not trying anything, you know? Well, yeah. But again, <laughs> we, we've tried a lot of things here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's funny because um, when I was in, in New York and I was lost, <laughs> I walked up to a, a group of... Um, police officers to ask them for directions and and, and I regretted that decision. <laughs> they're, so, they're so on edge that, you know, yes. they treat everything as a threat and I'm, you know, I'm looking for directions and I'm almost getting my fucking head blown off. So, yeah. you know, I think that's a problem. No, it's, a, it's, I, I completely agree with you, mate, for sure. For sure. <laughs> All right, man. Awesome, man. Have a good. Hey, you you oh, made can you I made. Just, uh, do a quick shout out. Yeah, you made history. You're the first caller in Middle America, sir. <laughs> uh, first in all capital letters. Um, yeah, shout out to the True Cult and to uh, uh, Damon Sage for being an organizational beast. And uh, if the Majestic Demon Lord ever sees this, shout out to the Majestic Demon Lord. Yes. <laughs> Where's the majestic demon lord when you need him? I know. He'll be around. All right. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Thank you for the call. Cool. Catch you later. This is insanity. He's right. We got, we got, we got to do something. I need somebody with, we need like an Elon Musk type figure to come up with some outside the box solution. Who's the caller? I'm blushing. Uh, that was Tosco, I believe, or Tesco. Okay, I need a right-leaning individual, a, a pro-Second Amendment-leaning individual to call us up and have a discussion about gun control. What are your thoughts? Um, what's your... Hey, Leah, long time no see. Glad to have you. Joseph, aren't you a right-leaning individual? Call up, Joseph, and let's talk about guns. Tell me why you think having 300 million guns in America is an awesome deal. I, I remember, Ian. I remember you, you, you did a great job. That was actually the first time you called up on the show. Um, I need a right-leaning person to argue stridently for it, though. Here is a here is an outside the box solution. Stop blaming an inanimate object for human behavior. James, do me a favor and and, and call us Vin and Sorry at uh, Skype and let's have that discussion. There's also a spree of kids getting run over at bus stops. That is true. It's very true. 
August was a weekend with 64 shootings. Mass shootings are every weekend here. Good Lord. Now, now what I'm trying to do is what I'm trying to accomplish before our timer runs out is I'm trying to find a right leaning person. Yep. Who <laughs> wants to tell us why? And I, I'm literally, you know, why it's good that we have all these guns in America. <clears throat> why it's good that we have guns in America? Yeah. I always thought it was good. Yeah, or if anybody wants to talk about the incel phenomena and get on and explain it to us, that would be great too. Um, because I'm honestly very, I'm still unclear about what's going on with this particular movement, the incel movement. Yeah. So I'd like to know, I'd like to know about that too. I mean, it doesn't seem like a new thing to me. I mean, there's always people who have a hard time getting a young lady, so. Yeah, but why are they giving themselves a license to go kill people now? Well, I don't know if they are giving themselves. I mean, it's one guy. That doesn't mean... Oh, this hasn't happened before? Yeah, I mean, not that I know of. <clears throat> there was one guy a couple years ago that he went up and shot up. He killed like four or five women, and he and he talked about he had a he was saying a lot of misogynistic stuff. Uh huh. Women need guns to protect themselves from incels. That is true. That's very true. Um. Welcome to Middle America, Vin and Sorry. Who's this? <laughs> Uh, it's BM fan again. Hey. Hey. All right, BM fan. Are you a are you a uh, right leaning? Oh no, Bricktown. Toxic masculinity doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> uh, BM fan. Are you a right leaning uh, pro Second Amendment gun person? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, I know, we could we could talk about the incel thing or, or or whatever you really want to talk about. Yeah, tell me. Okay, now look, BM, I love you, my brother, but I know how you feel about certain groups of people, so I need you to give me the least passionate explanation of who these people are and what they're about, okay? Um, these are people who, how can I really put it? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, the, 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 Isn't the, 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 the TLDR is basically just people who... The what? Yep. You know, People who can't, the TLDR, the too long didn't read. Uh, it's basically just people who, yeah, can't get laid. And so they start to really resent women and as specifically feminism and things like that because they think that by empowering these women, these women are now, you know, they, they won't sleep with them. Um, and they, they just go crazy, really. That's like the really, really quick and short version of it. Um, okay, so they are upset at feminism because it's empowered them to resist their advances and that's they blame feminism for why they're single uh basically the other thing that they blame is uh, is chats is what chats what what, you, what what's a chad uh a chad is like uh like your stereotypical alpha male like buff macho kind of guy or whatever who gets all the ladies <laughs> yeah they call them chads oh Okay. I have one in the room with me. Vocabulary for everything. It's great. Okay. Um, so the chads, so the chads suck because they get all the ladies. Yeah. And then the the women suck because it's the feminism that's you know whatever. Yeah. Or, or the, and also a uh, woman they call um, they uh, like you're really like preppy kind of woman or whatever who always go for the chads they call them Stacys. And okay, what's uh, a Stacy? The women that always go for the chat, you just said. Yeah, it's like your stupid kind of like bubble-headed kind of woman that they basically think every woman is. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a very insulting group of people. Because they, they, they don't even really call them women or whatnot, or, or, or girls or anything. They call them femoids. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> femoids. Femoids. It's great. How do you know so much <laughs> right. about their insider language, BM? Hmm? Huh? seen a number of posts from brain cells and the NCL subreddits and all that fun stuff. Like, these people are legit crazy. Are you married? Me? No. Okay, I thought... Well, he's, were... in, a, he's in a band, so he's alright. Mm. He's, <laughs> he's got a steady influx of Stacy's, I think. <laughs> <laughs> alright, so... 
so how are we supposed to look at these folks? Like, I, I had a caller here one time, and somebody said, somebody used that term. And um, in, yeah. incel, is it a pejorative term? Is it a self-designation? What is yeah. it? Yeah. I believe it's a self-designation. I mean, it's involuntary celibate. So they, they, they don't like that they're celibate. It's involuntary on their part. And they're, they're angry and bitter. Yes. Okay. What did you say they call the women again? What droids? Femoids. Femoids. Wow. F-E-M-O-I-D-S. Okay, and then you got Chad's. Stacy's. And then you have St- <laughs> Stacy's. Okay. Um, and then they, they also kind of, like, they split their ideology between what, what they kind of see as, like, a red pill, but then there's also the black pill. Okay, um, what's the black is, pill? Um, so the red pill is the notion of that, that general thing that I told you about, but the black pill is when they kind of become hopeless and suicide becomes, like, their only option. Shit. So these people are in a lot of pain. Wow. Yes. Okay. Like, like if you look at like uh, one of the things, like you'll see them like post photos of themselves, and a lot of times, like they're totally decent, like normal looking people, but they'll like convince themselves that they have horrible bone structure or whatever, and like their only solution is to is, is to just kill themselves. Wow. Or kill a bunch of women in a blaze of glory, and then. Uh, yeah, and then you have the people who idolize, you know, Elliot Roger, like this guy did, um, and things like that. Who Who's Elliot Roger? Yeah. Uh, he's the guy who shot up all those girls on like Valentine's Day a couple years ago. I think. Yeah. Okay. That's the one. Wow. That's the one I was thinking about. Okay. Yeah. That was that was Elliot Roger. And he, like, all these insults you'll see are like like they they tend to look at Elliot Roger as like a hero. Yeah. Yeah. That that guy. And then when they looked at his social and all his other stuff, it was all the stuff about women and how he could wow. never get a woman and how he yes he and hadn't had sex insane. in four years or something. Same with this. Same with this guy too. Like I can read some quotes for you if you want. Yeah. No. See, read them. In other videos, Burrell spewed racism. According to the AP, he denigrated black women as disgusting and suggested planting landmines to stop people trying to cross the U.S.-Mexican border. Here we go. Whoa. Uh, one video he identified with Elliot Roger, uh, who yeah killed six people at the University of California at Santa Barbara earlier. Uh, in a video titled The Rebirth of My Misogynism, he angrily recalled an incident in his eighth grade home economics class describing the will that a group of females can generate when they target anyone, be it an adult male or a classmate. Um, other outrages in life include women who gave him their phone numbers and later told him they had boyfriends. That's because he probably they were probably interested till he showed who he was. And then they were like, oh, I actually have a boyfriend. If he I, was kind of crazy. I need I need to get into contact with an incel and have a discuss. Is is there like any prominent incel like that speaks for that community? Um, I'm not sure. I generally, it, it, I think it depends on who, like some incels will be a little more like we're just hurting, man. We're just hurting, you know. Uh, and others are like legit, like crazy, like these people. Wow. Um, it it, it kind of depends on who you're talking to, I suppose. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're, we're in a crazy time in our country, BM. Good Lord. Oh, yeah. What is happening? Oh, yeah. What do you think is the overarching issue, man? Between last week and this week, I, I, I have an assumption of where you're going to go, but tell me from your perspective, what do you think the issue is? Um, I did, I, earlier, someone talked about Dirk Hyman, like a long fire site, right? Yeah. Um, I think it comes down to what Durkheim called anomie. Okay, explain explain for the people. Uh, it's basically when you're just totally, you just feel this total disconnection from society. Yeah. Yeah. So, which tends to result in, in the old days when Durkheim wrote in like, you know, 1890 or whatever, when he, when he did this, um, he kind of saw anomie as a possible reason for suicide. I think nowadays it's less likely, specifically because these individuals suffering from this are more easy to find other individuals who also suffer from it. Mm-hmm. So whereas, so now they do still, they're able to find a connection 
outside of society, you know, who, who shares their views. So uh, the way I see it is that it, it almost reinforces their autonomy. Which is kind of how we end up with all of this like really strong reactionary uh, kind of politics. So, of course, Alex's solution is that we should legalize prostitution, but I don't think that prostitution will solve the anime problem. Uh-uh. Um, if it's well, anime, how could it sol- How could that solve the problem? Yeah, like because it, remember, it's not just that we're also dealing with feminism. Right. 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 You know, because like they, they, they to them. Uh, they largely tend to fall into that more traditional kind of notion of a woman is, you know, just supposed to be in a house, like what she doing, you know, having sex with lots of guys or, or chads or whatever. Like it's, uh, they they just don't like any of that stuff. Yeah, and then then the then the issue is going to be the prices are too high, and then they're going to be mad at the, you know what I mean? I, I honestly, Alec, that's the dumbest solution I've ever heard you come up with in my life. I mean, generally though, I like I. I don't disagree with the notion of legalized prostitution. I think there's a lot of benefits that could come from that. Um, legalizing it or decriminalizing it? Or like... Uh, probably what? legalizing it. Or at the very least, regulating it. Yeah. Uh, I, generally, I'm in favor of regulation because I think the free market will always fail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was I was I was talking about this earlier, like um, uh, what was that? I was, I was kind of talking about how like eth- like our ethics have have pretty drastically changed because like a hundred years ago it was totally normal for ten year olds to lose fingers in factories working right under capitalists like that was totally normal that yeah. was just accepted you know but then socialists fought and now that doesn't happen anymore socialists fought and now we don't work seven days a week we work you know generally five days a week we have the weekend now right um so like all that kind of stuff like things change right no i agree with that things do change uh i just think that um legalizing prostitution would be a disaster for the already disastrous condition of women in this country I, I think I think we see the carnage that happens to women in the pornography industry. I mean, pornography is a form of legalized prostitution, um, and it it it's completely destructive to the women in that industry. I mean, would you agree with that? Um, I think it depends. I think some people are go into that kind of work because they're forced to, or they see that as their only option. Whereas others, like, I don't know, say, like, Sasha Gray or whatever, like, she clearly went into it and just had a ball. <laughs> right. Have you seen that documentary, Hot Girls Wanted? Uh, no, but I've heard of it. How much research have you done on the effects of prostitution on men and women? I mean, yeah. pornography. I mean, personally, not, not a ton. It's not something I really look into. Well, before you go advocating for legalizing prostitution, don't you think that that's something you should look for? Sure, but like I'm not, I'm not entirely advocating. I'm just saying, like there are benefits. There are benefits, and to Mike's point, how many suicides in the porn industry in the last six months? Uh, um. Okay, so, uh, but I don't. I'm gonna make a statement, BM fan. You tell me if it's right or wrong. I, I, I don't think that um, legalizing prostitution would fix the incel problem at all. No, I, I don't think it would either. Like I said, I think it's something far, far deeper. Okay. Yeah, we agree there. We got serious issues in our country, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think a large part of it is is the notion of society is changing and there is that strong resistance towards it, which causes that onomy. Okay. Onomy. Onomy is the word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> A-N-O-M-I-E. S- spell it again. A-N-O-M-I-E. Middle America, ladies and gentlemen. You learn at this channel. Ain't no ain't no silly channel. It comes, comes from Emile Durkheim. He wrote a book called Suicide. Back in like 1890 or something. He was like the first sociologist. Sweet. All right, brother. Love you, man. Have a good one. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Hey, Jen. <clears throat> Jen, are you going to call in? Talk to us about these people? I just... I can't believe that. Like, there's a whole movement of those guys. And they're, like, legit angry. It made sense that they don't like the feminist movement. 
Oh, for sure. They blame that for, for like, sure. why women would... A woman can't just stand up for herself without, you know, it being demonized. It, it's she mind doesn't bl- want to be with you. It's mind-blowing to me. That's it. It's mind-blowing to me that I actually have to have a conversation that there's such a thing as toxic masculinity. Wild. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Wild. <clears throat> In, uh, yeah, Sarcast, we had a shooting. We lost two people today in our country. Um, one young lady, 21 years old. And uh, another one's a doctor. So, yeah. Again. And it looked like this guy was uh, identified himself as an incel or misogynistic or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, it happened again today. When is your new channel happening? We're on the new channel right now, Mike. This is it. This so if is you it. want the notifications, you'll have to subscribe here. When was I supposed to find out about the new channel? <laughs> Tonight, right now. Your vaccination post <laughs> turned into a shit show, per usual. Yeah, one of these days we're going to get to the point where we can disagree with each other without throwing out ad hominem comments. D- does anybody want to talk about, um, what do you call it? So we got gun control. We got vaccinations. If we want to talk about vaccinations, that's fine too. Here's one. Should we should we uh, legally require vaccinations? No. What the heck? What is that actually about? a thing? I think I think it's something we should consider. Le- what? Well, look. If if no, if that you didn't see my post. Um, no, nope, I didn't see your post. Hold you on. think that we should I'm legally gonna, gonna vaccinate f- force people to have vaccinations? No friggin' way. No way. How do you, how can you say that? You haven't even heard the argument yet. I'm sure I know what the argument is. People are coming in from all over the place. They're going to be carrying stuff. If we vaccinate them, then we won't get an infestation in our country. Polio is making a comeback. Fine. If you don't want to get polio, get your vaccination. (laughs) That is ridiculous. What? (laughs) No way do I want anybody forcing me to take those nasty vaccinations. No. Aaron, the Bible actually encourages you to drink. Um, so, yeah, I agree. No legal requirements for vax of the father. Three, three special needs kids. I don't care what you say. They're at the very least affected my special needs kids. You really believe that, James? I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to be... What, wait, I'm not what trying happened? to be um, weird, but he's saying that the vaccinations caused some issues with his kids. Oh, yeah. I've heard that a bunch of times. Yeah, but I want, I I need data. Somebody come in with data. I want to hear some data about how vaccinations are... are, People are are trying to call in. Really? Well, I'm not on Do Not Disturbed. Do Not Disturbed? (laughs) Well, I'm already (laughs) disturbed because you're yelling at me just because I posted, you know, I just threw out an argument. Yeah, that's because there's no way in the world I want anybody forcing me to take any of that disgustingness into my body. What do you no mean way. disgustingness? What are you talking about? Because it's not your body. It's the kids. Okay. Yeah, that makes it better. They can put the nastiness inside of my kid. What do you mean the na- <laughs> Do you know what vaccinations are, babe? They, they have to put, like, all kinds of weird blood in there and all kinds of nastiness that they put all together and... Put part disease in there, and it's it's unnatural. Now I'm not completely against it altogether. Vaccination is unnatural. Are you being? You think that's natural? You think that they were walking around in Eden? Hey, babe, did you get your vaccination? No. <laughs> you gotta be. Are you? I'm completely serious. It doesn't. It's not. It's not. You think that's natural? Well, I I just oh, think word. that I think that it's uh there's. It's medicine. It's a form of medicine. Isn't yeah. It? Like yeah. Tyler, like our daughter was sick yesterday and you gave her medicine. They weren't the stuff that you gave her wasn't in the Garden of Eden either. Yeah. So what are you talking because about? Because have you seen what's inside of some of these vaccines? Which one? I did the research when uh when I brought my daughter for her stuff. 
but I did the research after she already had the vaccines, which if I would have known, I wouldn't have ever given them to her. There's like... So smallpox vaccine, we shouldn't have done that. No, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. I think that people should have the choice. I don't think that you should force that on somebody. Hmm. I don't want to be forced to have a vaccine. If I think it's a good idea, I want to do it. Can you imagine if the government had that? Had They'd what? be doing all kinds of friggin' tests. They'd be like, oh, we have a special vaccine for you black folk. Come on in. Yeah, it's called, yeah, that happened. That yeah, happened that's what I'm saying. You cannot trust the government to force some, no way. I can't even believe, you. are you considering that? Considering what? That, that that should be well, something no, they can I'm, do? I'm thinking through the, the, the process of, okay, we have, you know, what do you call it? Mm. You know, apparently polio is making a comeback or whatever. There's some disease that, let me... Polio is nasty. Well, yeah. So if we, if we you know, it's one of those, it's a social contract question, right? Polio strain, once completely eradicated disease, is now making a comeback because of you, anti-vaxxer. So, like... You know, it's the whole discussion of the individual's rights versus the good of the collective. You know what I mean? And so, like, if you get yourself, you know... Vaccinated. If you reintroduce a strain of some terrible virus or something into our populace... But if you are if you already have the vaccination and then somebody who's not vaccinated reintroduces it, you're good, right? I'm pretty sure you So if it. you want to take that chance, you take that chance. Caused by an adenovirus, not polio. Okay, um, this is uh, Middle America. Who are we talking to? This is Becky. Hey, Becky, what's going on? Well, uh, Hello. I don't have, hey, I don't have any, like, uh, data to give you, but uh, what I'm concerned about is uh, some of the really bad viruses that are floating around. If we don't vaccinate, you know, enough people, I mean, if there are people in the United States that aren't vaccinated, then even if people decide to get the vaccination and some people don't decide, you know, you can get the vaccination, but still, you know, because the vaccination, they take that, they take part of that virus and use it to help you get defense against it. The people who don't take it can get infected. Um, so it's not a good idea to choose not to get some of these vaccinations. You know, like you mentioned polio, you know, they had to do that. And, you know, at one point they stopped it, but now we're hearing that it's showing up in places. So I'm a little concerned about the idea of, of not requiring people to vaccinate their children. I know that there's some reactions, uh, but, you know, it concerns me. So what, what do you... Uh... Respond so, to Becky. So, here. Becky, you think that people should be forced to take vaccinations? I think if it's a if it's a disease that's highly um, uh, that can be passed very easily, and it's you know something that could spread really really quickly, um, you know, like the plague, or you know, I, I think it, it, we really should look at it. I mean. Uh, tuberculosis that killed zillions and millions of people you know so you have to think about it before you you choose not to take these you know and then my concern about not requiring it is if you've got half the people taking it and half not then you're going to still have an ep epidemic if that happens so I'm not saying that I'm for forcing anybody to do anything but I'm concerned because that could cause some major issues you know, we could have people getting these really scary diseases that mutate, you know, that keep mutating. And if, if you are not up on at least one vaccination against it, when it mutates, you know, you'll be even in worse shape. So that's my only reasoning towards it. I don't like forcing people to do anything, but it's scary if you think about it. Well, I mean, I see what you're saying, but what do you what are you gonna do? Like, let's say parents say, "No, I'm not gonna put that vaccination in my child," because um, there's concerns. There's there's adverse effects. There's um, some kids have gotten their vaccinations and died within a day or two after getting their vaccination um, mysteriously. Um, uh -huh. There's other children who end up with, 
Yeah, I think but, it's Asperger's and stuff like that that they're yeah, connecting to vaccinations. There's 300 million people in the United States of America. Yeah. So one kid out of I don't know 100 million kids gets dies two days after a vaccine. How do you have? Where are you pulling that number from? Where are you pulling the number from? No, I'm telling you that I did the research back when I brought my daughter, but it wasn't one in 10 million. The numbers were higher than that. But, I, but you know me. kids are just randomly dying two days yes. after vaccination. And, it's connect, and they're connecting it. Yeah, but how many people died of polio and smallpox and chickenpox? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like yeah. It's not even comparable. Are you, are you saying it's comparable? No, I'm saying if there's not, if there's a high risk for it, then I think that people will choose to do it. But I don't think people should be forced. Don't. Don't I do not think people should be for so if then if somebody doesn't do it are you gonna say like oh is that child neglect because they didn't give their child the vaccinations? Well, the, the parent is taking the chance of you know uh, putting their child into a position where where they're very susceptible to a, to disease. That's that's it's not like a flu shot, you know. Okay, you're gonna get the flu, but this is like. <laughs> You know, if you decide not to vaccinate your, your children, you're taking a chance of them possibly dying from something. And the question is, you I'm know, more research on this. does well, it, you know, does it require um, forcing, you know, vaccination, vaccinations at a certain time in a child's life? I mean, I, I have to lean towards yes, even though I don't like the idea of, you know, the people that get sick from them. I. I mean, for the good of the, you know, good of the countries, I think it's it's something we should really think about hard. Yeah, but do we have any empirical data that connects autism or Asperger's to any vaccination? I wish I could answer that. I, I don't know. I believe so. Autism. I believe it's autism. And autism. I believe that when I did the vaccinations, they told me that that was a potential risk. They said to you, sorry, autism is a potential risk. It was on, they give you a paper that has all the list of possible side effects. Well, you know, everything that we do is bad for us <laughs> one way or the other. Well, no, but, no, not everything. Eating broccoli is not bad for us. Like You know what I mean. I'm being pretentious, but you know what I mean. Uh, somebody's saying there's a link. Other people are saying there's there's not a link. If if there this is a good point, if there's an outbreak, you'll get quarantined. So that's not so far from mandatory vaccination. So let's say there's an outbreak and yep. your your kid has polio and they do you believe the government should be able to quarantine your child? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> What's the difference from what I'm saying? So yeah. so you would rather a reactive no. government? Hold on, let me make my point. You would rather a reactive government intrusion which is the kid gets polio now the government steps in and quarantines the kid versus a proactive government intrusion which is they require them to get it so that they don't have to be quarantined yeah because I mean, if, if that child has polio that child has been around other people so they're quarantining this this kid but now a whole bunch of people out there they touched or they were around are also infected, and I, that means the government has to find them. I, I agree. I, th I think that prevention was a much better strategy than reaction. Yeah, but the thing is, if they quarantine your kid after, like, they're not putting something into your kid's body. When you go in there, you have to trust that the doctor is putting the right thing into you that, that you're supposed to be getting. What do you think is more traumatic for a child? To be quarantined or to have a vaccination done? To have a vaccine, uh, to, to be quarantined. I think is more traumatic for them. So, I, I'm 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 trying to understand where you're coming from. What are you talking about? I would much rather Dorian get vaccinated than than get quarantined, pulled away from me. He's got some disease. He's probably sick, and you know they want their their parent more. And you're saying you'd be completely fine with the jackboot showing up and, and snatching our kid out and, and corn? You, you think that's a better eventuality than requiring vaccination? No, obviously vaccination? not. But I'm saying I don't, I don't want the government telling me that I have to put something inside of my body or inside the body of my child. Where are they going to draw the line? Okay, but you're okay with the government coming in and, and taking the body of your child out of well, your house? Well, I think that at that point they have to, they have to do something. 
And I don't think they come in and snatch the kid out of there. I think you have the kid in the hospital and they quarantine off an area. Like, you know, well, we, not, we quarantine people quarantine. with MRSA or other things in the hospital. We quarantine them. That's what happens. They're not just going to quarantine you. They're going to quarantine. They'll I quarantine mean, the, you child. with the kid because you're around the, the kid. Family, yeah. That that child so they're not touched. snatching the kid away from you. You're all going together. Exactly. It's to me. I don't understand the logic. We're okay with reactive government intervention, but not preventative government intervention. No, in this case, I, I agree with you, Ben. I think it's too dangerous. No. No, I'm asking. You sorry, you're, you're saying you. Oh, that's that's the clock. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, so that that's the final answer. All right. Well. That's my final answer. I think that. I think that it's certain ones are wise depending on if there's an if there's polio is coming back around, well then I would take my chance with the polio vaccine. But I don't want the government telling me that I have to, strapping me down if I don't want to and, and injecting me with that. No friggin' way. That's opening up way too many doors for them to do other crazy shit like they've already done. To put things in people's bodies and to do certain experiments and run different... No way. I think... With my kid? I think the eventuality of an outbreak gives the government a lot more open doors to do a bunch of more evil shit. Yeah. I think an outbreak in the mass hysteria that would come about because of that gives the government a ton. Um, yeah, yeah. Mine are. They're all yeah. vaccinated. Yeah, DMP. they are. They're all but, vaccinated. But, 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 like, don't you think? But I don't know with the baby coming. I don't know if I'm going to put all those vaccines like I did before. Don't you? Don't you think an outbreak is gonna okay. is gonna create a lot more excuses for the government to do crazy things with our rights and all the rest of it? Sure. What's going to happen if your child, because you don't vaccinate? And, and you know, ends up infecting like a whole community of well, people. Well, sarcast. We're we're Americans. We don't trust the government. <laughs> that's a European thing where you like completely. Uh, right. That's a European thing where you completely trust the government. We don't look look sarcast. I don't know what to tell you, but the government has already experimented on on people like me. <laughs> it's already been done. It's documented. It's undeniable. It happened. They experimented on black folk. So miss me with the whole, oh, the government conspiracy thing. It's happened in our history not too long ago. Try again. Mm -hmm. All right. Every medication that you take has been experimented on, or people have been experimented on from it. Good Lord. You know, it's not new. Okay, what about Ian? Then it's, sorry. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Becky, and thank you for agreeing with me, by the way. <laughs> All right, you guys take care. Bye. Well, he's saying that he did the research and that there's no connection. I have to look back into it. Yeah. I mean. We're obviously going to have to do some research here. Um, but um, do you trust Trump, Jen? You trust Donald Trump? <clears throat> yeah. Ian, please call in. Done. Well, I want Ian to call in because we made a we made a fact statement, so he's he's got to come in and. Uh... Listen, Sarcast, I need you to Google the Tuskegee experiment. Google the Tuskegee. Hold on, Ian. I need you to sarcast. I need you to Google the Tuskegee experiment, and then get back to me about conspiracies and trusting the government with inputting things into your body. Okay, Ian. We don't have a lot of time, my brother. Um, okay, so I'm sure you. Is this? This is Ian. Ian Aspie. Oh, I thought he said something else. Welcome to Middle America. I'm sure, um, I'm sure that you've heard the um, uh, idea, theory, whatever you want to call it, about um, the linkage between vaccines and autism 
what's your perspective? Have you done any work on that? Talk to us. Um, yeah, from what I've uh, discovered, it's mostly bullshit, um, and it's an old wives' tale. Um, in fact, I have a book upstairs right now by a guy called Tony Atwood, uh, A-double-T uh, Wood. Um, he's like the the main guru of autism, if you like. He spent his entire life studying autistic spectrum conditions. Um, and yeah, basically, there's this. It, it, I'm not entirely sure of like the history of where evidence to support it, like at all. Um, as far as it can be direct, like discerned, um, autism is a genetic condition, which is why ev- anyone who is on the autistic spectrum condition will almost certainly have parents that have some form of qualities that are on that um, spectrum. You know, they probably won't be autistic themselves, but they'll they'll have auti- au- like qualities on the autism spectrum, if you like. Um, so yeah, the, the most popular working theory is that it's a, a genetic condition. But yeah, the, um, I, I discovered that at first, um, when I first found out about my autism through a Google search. But yeah, if you look into any, like, serious books or publications there's no evidence for it whatsoever okay so there's no evidence of uh, autism being linked to vaccination well the doctor said when i brought her that there was a connection she, and she used the term uh, autism yes she mm-hmm. used the term autism but i need to research it again for myself because studies are always changing so maybe at that point you know they were making connections to it i'm not sure like i i have it, it's not fresh in my mind. I mean, my daughter's eight now. You know, she got all of her shots Sorry. when she was very young, huh? Sorry, did, did they specify which kind of autism? Because no. like, it's a very broad spectrum with a lot of conditions on it. So if they did, uh, I wouldn't have even remembered. So right. Well, I mean, to be fair, I'm I'm not. I'm willing to admit I might be wrong if someone can come up with evidence to the contrary, but my research has found absolutely zero evidence to support any connection between vaccinations and autism. Before we go, does anybody have yeah. any... I'm sorry, Ian. Before we go, does anybody have any research at all that proves that there's a connection between vaccination and autism? Yeah, Tosco, that might have been what it is. Because I, I, I'd want to I want to know. But, yeah, even if – but, Ian, are, are you familiar with this? Maybe it's different in in um, in w- where you are, but – and you don't have any kids yet, so vaccination might be a non-issue well, for you. But have, I, you, have, yeah. you, have you heard of that in, in Europe where there is a disclosure about autism connected to um. – I think that what what Aaron is saying, I mean, I think he he, he makes a point. Um, autism is not fatal or contagious. So if you had to do one or the other, yeah, your kid could end up autistic, but it, he won't get a disease that could kill himself. I get that. I get that argument. I'm just not comfortable at all with the government forcing people to take vaccinations. But I can understand your trepidation, but can I maybe make an argument for it? You, you don't necessarily have to agree, but so the, the the previous caller touched on it about the sort of mutation thing. Um, in that if if it like the, there's there's certain strains of um, pathogen that can spread like wildfire. We've seen this in history with the black plague, smallpox, etc. Um, and I mean, I, I get where you're coming from in terms of your civil rights, um, and I, 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 I'm with you on that because like yeah, I know I, I get the drive that you don't want to be forced. You know, you don't want the government to tell you what you should and shouldn't do. But at the same time, if enough if enough people were to be vaccinated, it would spread like wildfire through the unvaccinated population. And as we know, if it replicates enough itself enough times in enough victims, it can mutate. And if it mutates to a to a form that the vaccination is useless, then it would spread like wildfire through the population again and it could potentially kill millions. That's unlikely but not impossible. So that would be the counter argument. Yeah, that's a good point too. Well, so what do you think about that? Well, I didn't know about the the mutating 
I because I was saying, remember at the beginning of this discussion, I was saying, well, if you have a vaccination, then you know, if you're worried about it, get vaccinated and you won't have to worry about it. And even if it starts spreading around everywhere else, you're good. Yeah. But I was not aware that it'll mutate. But that makes sense that it would do that. Um, and then the vaccination, the people that are vaccinated would no longer be protected. See, my perspective is... Oh, that's a tough one. My perspective is civil rights have to be informed by civil duties. Wait. So, so, so you, you, if you only focus on what your rights are and you don't factor in what your duties are, then then we have a problem. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if that I say... exactly my point, yeah. If I say I have the right to not have something be thrust into my body or whatever whatever and you just look at that in isolation from your duty to your neighbor Mm -hmm. you know somebody said like my only job is to protect my kid and not my neighbor which you know which is not a christian perspective our perspective is Mm -hmm. that we have rights but we also have duties right and so it's like okay does this fall into the duty category this is not a a rights question does the the government have the right to whatever the Mm -hmm. question is it's a duty question Mm -hmm. is it our collective civic duty to not you know, put our given society or region in a situation where you could have a pandemic of something that we beat. Yeah. You know, we figured it out. We beat yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I have the right to take a, <laughs> a duty. You're ridiculous. Uh, this is a very interesting discussion. I'm, I'm very, yeah, yeah. Sarcast, you're right. The virus could mutate to new forms. Um, that's probably our car. <laughs> uh, good, good, good thought-provoking discussion. I didn't know that her and I would disagree. Uh, pray for us, y'all, because we have a kid on the way, so <laughs> we got to figure this out very quickly. <laughs> Thank you for everybody that joined the first installment of Middle America with Vin and Sori. Um, we appreciate it. If you if you haven't subscribed yet. Please like and subscribe. Uh, and there we are. All right. More arguments to come. More arguments and uh, civil <laughs> disagreement to <Yep>. follow. Then <laughs> out. Sorry out. Gone. <laughs>